What is going on, hunters? Welcome back to Helix's Wild Hunt. We have reached the city hub of Monster Hunter Online, and it's opened up a new set of quest lines and different NPCs that we can access. For this episode, we are going to be taking a look at the Lance that was just recently added on the March update. I also decided to try out one of the new armor sets. This is actually the Daimo Hermitar's armor set, and it's not the greatest in terms of stats, but I just wanted to start showing you guys some other unique armor sets, how they look like in this game. This one actually comes with defense up small, also wind resistance, so I guess it's really good if you're getting blown by... It's really good for monsters that push you with wind when they blow their wings, um, so that, that'll help you resist that. The only downside that I have with this is that it has thunder attack down, so that means that if I have any thunder weapons, it won't do as much damage. Uh, luckily, I don't have any thunder weapons at the moment, so that doesn't really apply to us. Also, if you look at the lance that I'm using, this is the Gypsaros lance, so it inflicts poison and it does more damage than the previous lance that I was using, which was the Yan Kutku one. Now for this episode, we're actually going to be hunting two classic monsters from the Monster Hunter universe. The first one's going to be the Cephadrome, which is basically a giant sand shark with two legs. I really don't know how to describe it. And the second monster is the Blue Yan Kutku, which is actually a variant of the Yan Kutku. Alright, so let's test out the lance, and let's get hunting. Now I hope you all enjoyed the little interim episode that I did right before this, just talking about the new monsters. I kind of want to be able to do that as well whenever there's new information that comes out for updates or expansions that are being released for Monster Hunter Online. We've entered the area where I, I believe the Cephadrome is. There he is. He's gonna rear his ugly head there. Now, compared to other monsters in the Monster Hunter universe, the Cephadrome is very similar to the Plesioth, which is a giant water shark that has legs. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm really trying to come up with words to describe these monsters, and that's the best I can come up with. The Lance is really going to benefit us in this fight because it allows us to stay close, and not only that, hopefully inflict some poison damage on the Cephadrome. I really enjoyed the Lance. It's actually one of my favorite weapons that I've used in the past in other Monster Hunter games. This one, it's a little bit different. They've actually added some new movesets, so I'm glad I have the shield there to block that one. But there's still a few things that they need to fix. In fact, there's actually a few things that they need to fix because there's some bugs that occur currently. Sometimes your character gets locked up and you can't actually move when you have the Lance out like I'm walking around currently. Oh, I should have put the shield up. Now, the Lance may not be as flashy as some of the other weapons, but it does have a charge attack, which I'll show you in a moment here, that can be directed in two different ways. One way is attacking at an angle towards the upper portion of the monster, and then the other way is a low attack, which is a little bit hard to perform. I've actually been trying to practice to figure out how to do it. I believe it's just hitting forward and then it'll work. Uh oh, not good. Here, I'll show you the charge attack. So this one is the upper attack, and then you can follow up with a few set of combos there. Now the other one is by... I'm gonna try doing it here, I'm gonna try charging, and I believe it's just you press forward. Yeah, and it, it'll do that way, but it, it, fe it seems a little bit finicky, and sometimes it doesn't go off the way that you want it to. So you just gotta keep trying your best. Now, Sonic Bombs actually affect the Cephadrome. If you see here, I'm actually gonna pull him out of the sand next time he goes underground. For now, he's already sticking out, so I might as well just attack him. I've never been a big fan of the Cephadrome or the Plesioth, just because they're really annoying, and in Freedom Unite, they had really, really... Well, actually, I don't know, I'm not sure if the Cephadrome was in Freedom Unite, but I know that the Plesioth was, and it had a really annoying hitbox. I'm just gonna block that. When you hold your shield up, you can actually do a lot of different jabs without having to unblock. I mean, it does leave you open for a split second, but it does have a very quick refresh, so you don't have to worry about releasing the block functionality. Let's 
see if I could even get... Alright, so he's gonna go in the ground right now, and you're gonna see what happens when I use the Sonic Bomb. Or not. Let me try one more time. <laughs> see what happens if I do this. There we go. Like, fishing for sharks in the, the, the sand. I'm sorry, I had no idea what I was gonna say there. There, I was actually trying to hit him with a low charge attack, but as you can see, it can get very finicky, and it doesn't allow you to do what you want to do. I highly recommend the Lance for those that like to play up close and personal to the monster. It allows you to stay as close as you can, even in its hitbox, because as long as you have your guard up, you'll be able to start doing damage while blocking the majority of the attacks. Except like that. So that was a new move. One thing to note, that what I don't even know what hit me there. The great part about the charge attacks is that you can recharge pretty fast afterwards See if I could do it right here. I did one charge, I did a stab, and then another charge right away, and that is the killing blow. So that was the Cephadrome, the giant sand shark. Our next monster is the blue Yan Kutku. So let's go hunt ourselves a blue wyvern. Now, as you can see, we're actually in a new zone here. It's actually uh, like a mountaintop snow level, so it's very important that you have hot drinks for this map. Or else your stamina starts going down really fast, and not only that, you start getting hungrier fast. I wanted to actually give a shout out before we start fighting the Blue Yen Cuckoo to Passion Possum. They actually drew a really amazing piece of fan art for my character, and of me, wearing the Balladay armor, which I was really not expecting at all, so that really made my day. And honestly guys, if you ever want to do fan art or have ideas for that, feel free to send them to me. I appreciate everything that all my viewers do or send me, so I would love to see what kind of things you guys can come up with. Alright, looks like we found ourselves the Blue Yen Kutku. I'm just gonna go and tag it here. One thing I'm gonna start doing in these episodes is now that I'm starting to get a little bit further and past kind of showing off all the weapons, I want to start showing off some of the group hunts that you can do, especially for the ones that have multiple people playing and uh, party finder capabilities. Here we go. So as you can see, I did not flinch at all because, well, I was shielding myself, but technically that means that I can actually do it now without even have to worry about putting up my shield. That little dance there is, uh, <laughs> it's adorable, first of all, but the original Yen Cuckoo doesn't have that dance that you just saw the blue one do. Now, he also has a lot of faster attacks as well, so you gotta really be careful when you're fighting the blue Yen Cuckoo. He'll combo in and rush you with his fireball run and not trip over as often as the, the regular Yan Cuckoo will. I really like the music in this fight too. I, I don't understand though why it's so epic for the blue Yan Cuckoo compared to some of the other monsters. I would kind of expect this one to be for like the Australian or something. Oh man, I gotta stop just rushing at him here. I'm gonna guard up. As you can see, he goes a little bit berserk a few times instead of just tripping over. Oh wow, there is a glitch that I wanted to show you guys. Um, oh, he's leaving already. Sometimes when you have the shield up, you're still gonna get hit by the monster, which is really, really annoying. There's also some new little trash mobs on the map here. Those are actually, uh, sh Shakalas? Shakalahalas? I, I forget how to pronounce their names. It was- I think I saw them the first time in Monster Hunter Tri. Shalahalahalalas? Okay, you're gonna have to stop with that. I should have probably been closer when I did that. Let's get some charge attacks in while he's stunned. Maybe we can even poison him. Which would be great. Nope, doesn't look poisoned. 
For some reason, the, they're actually blue in this game, which I'm not sure why they decided to do that. Oh, what was that? I don't know what that move was, but I did end up hitting him at least. Now, there have been a lot of monsters that I've actually fought that haven't been unlocked yet in my storyline, and that's because when you do the random party finder, uh, sometimes you'll find mobs that are in unstable zones, and what that means is that there's going to be a secondary monster that you can always find to hunt as well, on top of the monster that you are originally planning on fighting. The cool part about this is that you get extra pieces of... Ugh, that was not a good hit. <laughs> you also get extra craftable materials from the monsters that you're fighting because they are available on the map. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you also get ranked on fighting those secondary monsters too, so you can actually have a chance of getting a lot of extra pieces on the finish screen there when you uh, finish the quest. Let's see if I can get a regular charge here. Yep, got a regular charge, and I think I poisoned him too. I keep thinking I poisoned him, but I'm not too sure. As long as, as long as I can see purple clouds of smoke coming off of him, then I'll be happy. Let's go charging. Let's see who wins this. Okay, he's gonna win. He uh, he definitely won. He won that joust. I'm gonna see. Oh, I got hit by the fireball there. Oh, I got hit by the other fireball. That was not good. Not good at all. Oh, oh, oh heal, heal faster! I'm sorry, guys. That was a bad string of getting hit by the monster. Though I haven't seen my character get stunned or dizzied. Oh, come on. I'm just trying to heal right now. Which is a little bit different. In Monster Hunter 4, you really get to see that happening, well, if you get hit by two attacks. Alright. It looks like I have my super move. I'm actually not a big fan of it, but let's see if I can actually land it on the Kutku here. I gotta wait for a good opening, though. I feel like there's a lot of delay with this move. Alright, here goes. Basically, I go into a charge, and then leap, and I completely missed him! Oh, so as, I don't know if you remember in the previous episode when I was showing you guys dual blades, but I'm not a big fan of the Lance's super move, just because you really have to land it, and you go into the air. Ugh, that was obnoxious. I was actually asked why I don't like using um, the seeing the numbers when I'm fighting the monsters in this game, and that's just because I've never been used to doing that in any of the other Monster Hunter games. We never got to see our weapon damage. So I'm, I'm actually not a fan of uh, seeing those numbers. Here we go. Alright, so I've weakened the Kutku. He's gonna try to fly away now. Actually, I should probably try to get a paintball on him. Maybe this will work. Nope, definitely didn't work. I think it actually just ticked him off. Oh, that's perfect. It prevented him from flying away, so that's good. I completely missed with the paintball, too. No, that missed. Oh, come on! I've never been a real big fan of the trash mobs that are in the middle of the map, especially the ones that can knock you down when you're trying to find the, fight the main monster. few more hits, I bet, and he'll go down here. Maybe this charge hit here will finish him off. No, it did not. And I just got hit. Ah! How? I blocked that! He's definitely more homing uh, in the, the blue version compared to the regular one when he's running after you. Yes, there we go. 
So that was the Blue Yan Cuckoo. Rest in pieces and pieces. I hope you guys enjoyed those hunts. Oh, that gave me a lot more trouble than I thought. I really like the Lance. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not enjoying it too much now since I've been playing some of the other weapons, but uh, hopefully they start fixing some of the issues that are currently prevalent in uh, this game. So that was the Lance. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I hope you enjoyed the hunts as well. Uh, next episode we're going to be trying out the bow. It's actually supposed to be very OP in this game, so I'm actually looking forward to seeing how that plays like. If you have any other suggestions or comments, feel free to let me know below. I wish you all happy hunting, and I'll see you all! on the next level.